Section 9.4 still is going to be looking at trying to figure out whether an infinite series converges or diverges. And we're going to start adding some more tests to what we already have. And so in 9.4, we're going to use comparison tests to decide whether an infinite series converges or diverges. So here's the idea of these comparison tests. The basic idea is to find some infinite series. Let's say we have the series 1 over n plus 2. And then say, well, that's going to be really, really similar to 1 over n. And because this infinite series 1 over n plus 2 is going to be really similar to 1 over n, as long as I know that the infinite series adding up 1 over n from n from 1 to infinity, as long as I know that diverges, then this will probably do the exact same thing. This will also diverge. And so that's the idea of comparison tests. Now, there's a couple of comparison tests that we're going to look at in 9.4. Um, I will emphasize that when you're doing this on the actual um, classroom test, in other words, when you're doing this, I'm not going to have you show all of the steps to show the direct comparison part. I'm not going to show all the steps to say, oh yeah, we can use this comparison test. I'm just going to say, what are you comparing it to? Uh, that'll be more clear once we get into what we're talking about. So here is the direct comparison test. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to start with two sequences. Um, and these two sequences we're going to denote by a sub n and b sub n. Now, they're both going to be sequences which have positive terms only. So they're going to both be sequences with positive terms. And we're going to have the b sub n be bigger than the a sub n, always, for each term. I mean, term by term, the b sub n is going to be bigger. Now, again, um, this is for large enough n. So maybe the first couple of terms don't obey this. But you know, after term 10, they obey this. Or maybe they obey this every time. But after a certain point in time, this is always true. So we're talking about positive sequences where at a certain stage, the B's are all bigger than the A's. OK? So we have these sequences. We're going to add them up. We're going to add them up in an infinite series. And all we're going to say is that, well, if adding up the bigger terms converges, then obviously adding up the smaller terms also has to converge. So if you add up the bigger ones and the bigger ones converge, then adding up the smaller ones also has to converge. Again, when I say bigger and smaller, these all have to be positive. Um, each term in the sequence should be positive, at least after a certain point. And then the opposite is also true. If adding up, if taking an infinite series of the sequence of a sub n diverges, in other words, if adding up all of the smaller terms diverges, then adding up all of the bigger terms also has to diverge. So if one is bigger than the other, if the bigger one converges, so does the smaller one. If the smaller one diverges, then so does the bigger one. That should be pretty obvious um, in terms of what's going on. I say smaller one. We all should understand that when I say smaller one, I mean smaller in terms of which terms are in my sequence. Now, one way you can do this is you can use a direct comparison of something like this. So we have this infinite series n plus 1 over n squared. And we want to compare it to something. 
we want to compare it to a series where we already know what happens. Now, we already know what happens in geometric series. We already know what happens with a sum of 1 over n to a power. We've seen that in the previous two sections. So the main goal is to say, well, what are we going to compare this one to? Since this is a rational function, and the largest growth on top is an n to the first power, and the largest growth on bottom is an n to the second power, we're going to compare it to the series sum from 1 to infinity of 1 divided by n. All right, so take my infinite series and compare it to the infinite series 1 over n, uh, sum of 1 over n. Oh, there we go. I'm going to zoom this in just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, here's what's nice about comparing it to 1 over n, uh, infinite series 1 over n. We already know that this one diverges because this infinite series sum of 1 over n is what we dealt with last time with a p-series test where p was equal to 1. So because of that p-series test with p equal to 1, we know this one diverges. Now what else do we have? Well, if I notice n plus 1 over n squared, and I compare that to 1 over n, let me take that, in fact, I'm just going to go cut and copy and paste. If I compare this to 1 over n, which one is always going to be bigger? Well, if you think about it, n plus 1 over n squared is always going to be bigger than 1 over n. I, that's my claim anyways. And the reason for that, let me go through. So it's always greater than or equal to 1 over n. Um, you can see that because these are positive, what I can do is I can do a cross multiplication. So I can take n plus 1 cross multiply, take this n across the top. And because I'm multiplying by a positive number, sign doesn't change. And then take n squared times 1. That's just n squared. Obviously, on the left there, what I get is I get an n squared plus n. All right? And since n is always going to be positive, n is going to be a positive integer, then the left side has to be bigger than the right. Okay? So what I have is that I know this infinite series diverges because of the p-series test. I know that these terms are all bigger than those terms. And so since the smaller one diverges, the bigger one also has to diverge. That's the direct comparison test. All right. So that's what, that's, uh, what we come up with. So the bigger terms added up have to diverge. Because the smaller terms added up, we know diverge. Okay? So this infinite series must diverge. Now, what I was talking about earlier is that many times what you'll do on the test is I won't actually ask you um, 
to write any of this stuff that I've highlighted here. So I'm not going to ask you um, to show me that these terms are always bigger than this one. I'm just going to say, well, what does this compare to? Sum of 1 over n. And there's for since we know this sum of 1 over n diverges, you can skip down to the very end and say, therefore, this one also must diverge. OK. So um, a lot of times, I won't have you work out the actual showing of that, oh, yeah, these terms are bigger than this one, or these terms are smaller than this one. So hopefully, that all makes sense. Now, in this example, we used the P-series test. And it turns out that there's going to be another um, test that we're going to see in just a couple of examples where the n plus 1 over n squared is actually a little bit easier to deal with. Because notice that n plus 1 over n squared obviously had bigger terms than the 1 over n. We're going to compare n minus 1 over n squared as well. And it obviously has smaller terms. So what's going to happen when we have slightly smaller terms? But we know it's growing at about the same speed. So we'll see that in a couple of examples here. But first, I want to show you where the direct comparison is really useful. Direct comparison is really useful in dealing with something like this. An infinite series of adding up 1 over n factorial, starting at n equals 1 and going to infinity. Let's take a 1 over n factorial, take the infinite series, and compare it to something. Now, again, the couple of things that we've already found that co either converge or diverge, we've used telescoping series to show convergence. We've used uh, divergence in some ways. Where we use the geometric series, we use the P series, we use the integral test. So inter integral test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare using the geometric series. All right. I'm going to compare using 1 over 2 to the nth power. OK? That's a geometric series. We know that this converges. Oops. I don't, I don't care what it's to. We know it's convergent. You can. We've already figured that out. Um, earlier. In fact, we used this series already. Um, R is equal to 1 half, which is less than 1 in terms of absolute value. So there we go. Let me write that. Because geometric with R equals 1 half. All right. So we know that already converges. Um, I claim that 1 over n factorial is going to be smaller than 1 over 2 to the n as long as n is big enough. All right? So 1 over n factorial is smaller than 1 over 2 to the nth power for n at a certain for n, which is big enough. And I think something like 4 is where it actually um, gets big enough. And by the way, all that is is saying that, again, cross multiply, 2 to the nth power is smaller than n factorial for and I think greater than 3. So greater than or equal to, whoops, 4, however you'd like to say that. So as long as n is at least 4, 
n factorial is bigger than 2 to the nth power. And therefore, we have a sum of a smaller sequence compared to the sum of the bigger sequence. We know the bigger sequence converges. Therefore, the smaller sequence, when I add it up, must also converge. Let me restate that because I said the sequence converges. The infinite series converges, and therefore this infinite series must also converge. Okay? So there you go. By the way, this is just being able to know that n factorial has a faster growth rate than 2 to the nth as long as n uh, gets as get, n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, which we've looked at before. So again, since the sum of the terms of the bigger sequence converge, the sum of the terms in the smaller sequence also has to converge. All right, so now we know that sum of 1 over n factorial also must converge, which you probably would have guessed because obviously 1 over n was the cutoff value with the p-series test. And if you think about what has a faster growth rate than n, well, n factorial has a much faster growth rate than n. So 1 over n factorial um, must converge. Again, on the test, I will not ask you to you know, prove that these terms are smaller or anything like that. And I probably won't even ask you to justify why the series that you're comparing it to converges or diverges. I'm just going to say, what do you compare it to? And therefore, what's this mean? OK? Now, the direct comparison is nice when you're dealing with something like 1 over n factorial. But like I said, if we started this one, if I just said, well, what about n minus 1? Direct comparison wouldn't work if I had n minus 1 over n squared on top, excuse me, n minus 1 over n squared as my argument that I'm adding up. Even though n minus 1 and n plus 1 probably grow at about the same rate, direct comparison doesn't work. So it turns out that instead of using a direct comparison, in a lot of rational functions, it's easier to deal with a limit comparison. All right? So let's say we have two sequences. And on the notes, I said they're nice sequences. Now, nice uh, means that they're what we deal with before. They're going to be um, positive terms. So we're going to have positive terms. They're going to go to 0 um, mostly. I mean, if they don't go to 0, then obviously they diverge. But um, we're going to have positive terms of our sequences. Uh, they're going to be able to be represented using continuous functions, those types of things. All right. So if we have a couple of nice sequences, just think nice as positive terms, then the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, or if we have nice sequences and the limit of this ratio, a n over b n, is equal to a real number, that real number can't be 0. That real number is obviously not going to be infinity as well. So if we don't get 0 or infinity, then either they both have to converge or they both have to diverge as infinite series. OK? In other words, if they, if they are growing at the same rate, that's, as a, that's essentially what's going on here. A n over B n equaling a certain limit that's non-zero means that A n is not growing 
faster than BN, and BN is not growing faster than AN. So if, if they're essentially growing at the same rate, we're going to equal some real number limit, then they both have to converge or they both have to diverge. Okay, so growing at the same rate, read that statement there. Limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n means growth at the same rate. So let's take a look at um, an example here. Here we have example three. We're going to determine the convergence of the series using the limit comparison test. So we have this series here sum 1 to infinity, 1 over this polynomial. Now, I want you to notice 1 over this polynomial. This polynomial is a quadratic. So it's growing at a quadratic rate. All right, so what are we going to compare it to? Let's take and compare. 1 over 3n squared minus 4n plus 5. We're infinite sum of that. Let's compare it to 1 over n squared. Now, notice what I did here. We had 1 over a quadratic, and I compared it to 1 over n squared. I did that because I already know that the sum of 1 over n squared from 1 to infinity converges due to the p-series test, right? p is equal to 2, um, and so I know that. So if I control copy that, we know that this guy converges due to the p-series test, and p in that case is 2. All right. Now, how can we compare this one to that one using limit comparison? Let me say this. The thing that I'm going to do next is not going to be required when you go and do your homework or when you go and do your um, test or quizzes or anything like that. But I do want to show you what's, what's actually happening and what the limit comparison test is doing. So for right now, I'm going to show you this, but obviously you don't need to do this. So we're going to take a limit, at, or we're going to take the limit, I should say, as n goes to infinity of... Well, i got to call one of these a sub n and one of these b sub n. It doesn't actually matter which one you call a sub n and which one you call b sub n. So let's call that one a sub n. And then the other one, 1 over n squared, we'll call that b sub n. So we're taking this fraction over that fraction. Okay? Now, if you rewrite that, let me rewrite that a little bit nicer. What you get, well, since we have one on top and one on bottom, I can just flip. Um, and so what we're going to get is we're going to get an n squared divided by, whoops, undo. n squared divided by, dang it. Well, let me see if I can do, the, do it this way. I apologize. So, I again, that took me longer than I needed to. n squared over 3 to the n squared minus 4n plus 5. Well, we know, based on L'Hopital's rule, based on stuff we saw in Chapter 8, these have the same growth bottom, same growth on bottom as they do on top. So all we need to do is write out the coefficients, which is one-third. So I get a real number limit. Therefore, this proves that this 
1 over 3n squared minus 4n plus 5 and 1 over n squared are decreasing at the same rate. Okay? And therefore, since this one converges and it's growing at the same rate as one uh, infinite series of 1 over 3n squared minus 4n plus 5, that infinite series 1 over 3n squared minus 4n plus 5 must do what the infinite series 1 over n squared does. So it has to also converge. All right. So that's the idea. Okay, it's saying, well, 1 over 3n squared minus 4n plus 5, this is a quadratic growth on the bottom. So the whole fraction is behaving like 1 over a quadratic. And therefore, since this behaves as 1 over a quadratic, these two infinite series are going to do the same thing. We know this one converges, therefore this one must also converge. Now I'm going to really quickly um, start ignoring this step, both in my notes and uh, obviously in homework and stuff. I don't need you to prove that this limit as n goes to infinity is a real number. I just need you to understand well, this one, this whole fraction, is going to 0 at the same rate as 1 over n squared. Okay? So that's the idea. So let's take another example. I want you to look at this infinite series, push pause on the video, and determine, using the limit comparison test, first off, what this series would compare to, and then secondly, if this series converges or diverges. You don't have to write the limit thing, but again, compare it to what series, and then ask yourself whether it converges or diverges. And push pause on the video. In five seconds, I'll give you the answer. All right, so let's take a look at the answer here. All right, so we're going to take the infinite series 1 over square root of 5n minus 2 and compare that to essentially the infinite series 1 over square root of n. Now, 1 over square root of n is also known as 1 over n to the 0.5 power. So we could also think of it as the infinite series 1 over n to the 0.5. Now, we know, based on our last um, section, that 1 over n to the 0.5 diverges. Because of the p-series test, p is less than 1, so that diverges. So this infinite sum diverges. Hopefully, everybody understands why 1 over 5n minus 2 is growing at the same rate of 1 over square root of n. I'm not going to show you the limit. Um, if you did take the limit, depending on which way you went, you'd get a limit of 1 over the square root of 5. Or you would get square root of 5 over 1, depending on which fraction you put on top and which fraction you put on bottom. So, I'm not going to do the limit, and I'm not going to ask you to do the limit either on any of the tests, like compute the limit of 1 over square root of n versus 1 over square root of 5n minus 2. But hopefully you can see, oh yeah, that, this is n to the first, we're doing a square root. You know, ignore this coefficient of 5, that's not going to do much. Ignore the minus 2, that's not going to do much when n gets really, really big. So anyways, adding things up, 1 over square root, 5n minus 2, also must diverge. All right? So again, this one has the same growth decay rate as 1 over n to the 0.5 power. Since we know 1 over n to the 0.5 power diverges, our infinite series must also diverge. There we go. I want you to do the same thing 
for the next problem. Example 5 has infinite series n squared minus 5 over 7n to the 5th plus 18. Go ahead and use uh, the limit comparison test. You don't have to calculate the limits, but use the limit comparison test to figure out if this infinite series converges or diverges. All right, so here it is. Um, again, push pause if you haven't done that yet. Um, here we go with the answer. Whoops. So what we have, n squared minus 5 over 7n to the 5th plus 18 n squared minus 5 over 7 into the 5th. The growth rate here on top is n to the 2nd. On bottom, it's n to the 5th. Now, if I do n to the 2nd divided by n to the 5th, that's like having an n to the 3rd on the bottom. Again, I'm ignoring the minus 5s and the plus 18s um, because when you take the limit as n goes to infinity, you can deal with L'Hopital's rule. Those things are going to go away. So we have n squared over n to the 5th growth like I said, that's just like having a 1 over n to the third. Now, this coefficient of 7 will come out when you take the limit. When you take the limit, you'd either get a 1 seventh or a 7 over 1, depending on which one you call the A and which one you call the B. But we don't need to go ahead and do that. All we have to do is say this one is growing slash decaying. The sequence is growing slash decaying at the same rate as 1 over n to the third. We know the infinite series adding up 1 over n to the third converges because the p-series test and p is equal to 3. Therefore, since this one is growing at the same rate, this infinite series must also converge. And that's all you would need to do on the test. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to try a couple more. First off, we're going to get our um, numerator and denominator are going to get a little bit trickier as we go through this. So you're ha going to have to be able to um, selectively see things and ignore things and understand when things are going to go away. But that's how this goes. So let's take and look at example six. So I want you to determine the convergence of this series. Figure out what you should compare it to, and then using the limit comparison test, and then decide on whether this series converges or diverges. I'm going to push pause on the video. In about five seconds, I'll come back with the answer. Here we go with the solution. Now, sum of 1 over n times the square root of n squared minus 2. We're actually going to compare that to 1 over n squared. Now, once you compare it to 1 over n squared, then everything should kind of fall in place. 1 over n squared, infinite series of 1 over n squared converges because of the p-series test. p is bigger than 1. Therefore, as long as this one grows at the same rate as 1 over n squared, it also must converge. So this series, 1 over n times square root of n squared minus 2, must also converge. Now, if you have a hard time seeing this fraction and saying, oh yeah, that's going to compare to 1 over n squared as a sequence, then what I would do is suggest you do a couple of things. First off, think about what's happening as the limit as n goes to infinity. What pieces can I ignore? What pieces shouldn't I ignore? So I need to look and find the fastest growth rate on the top, which obviously here is 1, and then the fastest growth rate on the bottom. Now, my bottom has things that are multiplying times each other. But this minus 2, as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, is not actually going to affect much. So what I can do is I can take that denominator and kind of ignore 
the, the minus 2 because that minus 2 is not going to be my fastest growth rate even inside of the, the square root piece. My fastest growth rate inside of that square root piece is n squared. Now from here, the n squared, well, square root of n squared is just n. So really on that denominator, we're getting n times n, which is 1 over, obviously, n squared. OK? So that's the idea. Ignore everything but the fastest growth. And by the way, you can do this uh, on the previous problem as well. That's kind of what we were doing. And now I'm saying equal. That's probably a bad um, uh, bad terminology, uh, writing these equal signs. I should really put is like this instead of equal to that. But you guys get the point. As n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, I just look at the fastest growth here. And when we're multiplying, obviously the fastest growth here is n. Fastest growth here is the square root of n squared. So that's what's happening. Let's do one more example before we move on to the next section. I want you to determine the convergence of the following series using the limit comparison test. In, uh, infinite sum n squared plus 7n divided by n squared minus 2n plus 10. Go ahead and push pause on the video. In five seconds, I'll come back with the answer. So the answer to this one is that this infinite series is going to diverge. And if you look at comparing this infinite series to an other in, another infinite series that we know, where we have n squared plus 7n divided by n squared minus 2n plus 10. Ignore the 7n minus 2n plus 10 part. This is essentially like, like n squared over n. Hopefully that makes sense. In terms of a sequence, this underlying sequence is just like n squared over n squared which is just 1 over 1 when you're dealing with um, numbers which are positive integers. So this is just like 1 over 1. Now, if you think about 1 over 1, that is not a p-series test, although it could be uh, made into a p-series test. But 1 over 1, um, infinite series summing up 1 over 1. Well, the underlying sequence of 1 over 1 just gives us 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. We're adding up a bunch of 1s. So the underlying sequence does not have a limit of 0. So therefore, this infinite series diverges. And so since this infinite series grows, decays at the same rate as this infinite series, this infinite series sum of n squared plus 7n over n squared minus 2n plus 10 also must diverge. All right? And so we can see that this limit comparison test is really, really useful when we have um, a sum of a polynomial or polynomial-like function, like square root or cubic root over another polynomial or polynomial-like function, OK? So that's where this, real, this um, limit comparison test really, really comes in handy. All right, so that is the end of section 9.4.